welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at genetic engineering, how it works, some examples and uses of the different components. So first of all, we're going to look at some examples of what genetic engineering might involve. And so genetic engineering might be used to manipulate the genome of bacteria, for example, so that they produce the insulin that humans need. We could also manipulate the geno genome of tomatoes by introducing a gene taken from fish that live in Antarctic waters and therefore these tomatoes won't freeze during cold weather and they can then um, be grown therefore at different times of year. So there's some examples of why we would use genetic engineering. What we're now going to do is have a look at some of the steps involved. So the first thing we do with genetic engineering is we isolate the gene that we want to manipulate. So for example, our desired gene here could be the human gene that codes for insulin. So we would isolate this gene that codes for insulin from, human, from the human genome by using restriction endonucleases. These are also known as restriction enzymes. And what these do is they cut the DNA to create sticky ends. And sticky ends, as you can see here, are areas of the DNA that have exposed, they have exposed bases. And these sticky ends are vital for um, annealing this into the vector, which we'll look at in a little bit. The third step that we need to be aware of here is that the vector that we're going to use has to be cut with the same restriction enzymes. Now a vector is a component that will be transferring our desired gene into an organism that's going to be making the protein from this desired gene. Now by using the same restriction enzymes to cut my vector, this will mean that my vector, in this case my plasmid, will have complementary sticky ends to my desired gene because they're both cut with the same restriction enzymes. So because they have complementary sticky ends, this means that when DNA ligase comes along to almost glue and anneal those two bits of DNA together, they should fit together quite nicely due to this complementary sticky ends. Now, as well as annealing in my desired gene, what is also put in usually is some kind of a marker so that you can actually see if your desired gene has been taken up by your vector. Now, that marker might be, for example, a fluorescent marker, or it could be a gene that codes for antibiotic resistance. So once you've got your manipulated vector that contains your desired gene, in this case is my plasmid, we then need to undergo a process called electrophoration, which is where I would introduce an electric shock to my bacteria, which makes the membrane more porous. And this will hopefully ensure that the plasmids are taken up by the bacteria. Um, and once that has happened, I can then test to see if my bacteria has taken up my plasmid. Because what will happen is my bacteria will undergo mitosis, it will undergo asexual reproduction by mitosis to produce many clones of itself. And these clones will all contain my manipulated plasmid. Now, as I mentioned, you'll screen these to check if they are, have actually taken up your plasmid. And you'll do this by using the marker. So if, for example, you use the fluorescent marker in your plasmid, you would test to see if they've taken up this plasmid by using a UV light to see if your cells have actually taken up the plasmid. Equally, if you've used antibiotic resistance gene, you could apply antibiotics to your bacteria. And those that survive the antibiotics have taken up your plasmid because they have the gene as well that codes for this antibiotic resistance. Now, there is alternative methods to extract your, de your desired gene, such as using reverse transcriptase. And this is quite simple, really. You start off with the mRNA rather than the desired DNA. And you basically reverse it using reverse transcriptase to get back to your cDNA, your complementary DNA. It's just another method that you may need to be aware of. And there's two more definitions we need to be aware of that recombinant DNA is DNA combined from two resources. So for example, the plasmid that contain the desired gene. And this is the last thing you need to be aware of, different vectors that can be used in different organisms. And it's in a red box, you need to know it. it's from the Mark scheme. Good luck. <laughs> 